2017 and just issued on spaceweather.com a geomagnetic storm heading towards Earth today at 1.5 million miles per hour. Now, we've been dealing with these earthquakes and solar wind and radiation for the last several weeks now. The coronal holes on the sun have been impacting and creating these earthquakes on Earth. And I'm just going to go ahead and get right into the statement issued by spaceweather.com. And it states, solar wind surrounds the Earth for the fifth time in a row. Earth is surrounded by a fast-moving stream of solar wind flowing from a large coronal hole in the sun's atmosphere. NOAA forecasters say that there is a 25% of a G1-class geomagnetic storm. So you say to yourself, well, what does this all have to do with me, you, yourself, in general? Well, over the past two weeks, this is all that we've been dealing with are the coronal holes on the sun, what is affecting the sun, and all of these earthquakes all over the world. So getting right into the live map for earthquakes right now in live time. And if you just take a quick look at what is going on right now, just about on every continent on this planet, we have earthquakes and like I have been saying since going back to July I kept telling everyone as we get closer to winter time in the months of December January and February we are going to have increased earthquake activity and then followed up by increased volcanic activity no I'm not turning my Nibiru and Planet X channel into an earthquake channel but if you've been following me for quite some time, and you remember, I told everyone in all of my videos, these will be the first telltale signs that something is going seriously wrong, and it's going to begin with this increased earthquake activity. And it's happening. Each and every day around the globe, the earthquake activity is increasing, in frequency and magnitude. Now, right now, the state of California, I'm just going to go ahead and move right over here to California. We'll zoom in just a little bit. Now, these earthquakes are only updated for, a for the last 24-hour period. So, as I had mentioned yesterday, the streaming line of earthquakes up and down the San Andreas Fault are very alarming. Now, the state of California is undergoing this torrential downpour of rain. They also have snow melt that will be coming down from the Sierra Nevada mountains. Mudslides, earthquakes, flooding, the potential for a complete disaster. If you just look around the globe over the past 24 hours, two hours ago, magnitude 4.9 in Greece, Tajikistan, magnitude 5. The Philippines, two hours ago, magnitude 4.8. Indonesia, 4.7. This earthquake, 41 minutes ago, just came in, again, from Indonesia, magnitude 5.5. And then the, the earthquakes and the aftershocks are just stacking up on top of each other. Magnitude 5.3, 5.3, 5.2. And something that kind of caught my attention was the very large earthquake in the northernmost tier of Canada in this group of islands up here. Now, the first earthquake was listed as a magnitude 6.4, Queen Elizabeth Islands, Canada. I mean, if you just take a look at a, at a map of North America and Canada, sometimes you don't even see these islands up there. But did they have just one earthquake? Uh, no, they're stacked on top of each other. And the further you zoom in, you start to see that not only did they have one, at a magnitude 6.4, but then a 5.8 and another 5.8. Moving over to the South Pacific, Ring of Fire, again, in the Fiji Islands, these earthquakes are just stacked on top of each other. And they're not small, 4.9, 4.9, 5.1, 5.1, 5, 5.2, 5 
six. And again, you know, the reason why I go over this earthquake information and try to give everyone an update is because I'm trying to make you understand that there is more going on with the dynamics of our Earth, our planet, than just this natural occurrence of earthquakes. Now, this is going on across the globe. This map that you're looking at doesn't even show all of the earthquakes that are occurring on this planet. If you go and use the European model over the past 24 hours, we'll go ahead and just zoom into this. Now, this is just the past 24 hours. What I'm concerned with is the west coast of the United States, Mexico, and the west coast of South America. The earthquakes are just stacking up each and every single day. Now, something that I wanted to show you that was very alarming. And this is coming right from the USGS, and these are heliplots, seismograms. Earlier this morning, I was just, you know, checking up on these to see the intensity of some of these earthquakes that were occurring in the state of California and across the border over into Nevada. And then what I discovered was these anomalies that all occurred across the United States around midnight and we're just going to look at a few of them here new mexico you can see this this heavy spike and i'll just click on this and zoom into it and you can see this one was around midnight when it started and then about uh 12 after 10 after there's your large spike okay and this is data from station a n m o albuquerque new mexico last updated monday the 9th of january 5.02 a.m. Okay, well, you say, big deal, Scott. What's that have to do with anything? Well, if you take a look at the rest of the United States, this is Missouri, same time. Oregon, same time. Florida, same time. Texas, the same time. Massachusetts, the same time. And it goes on and on and on. The state of Pennsylvania, right here, Standing Stone, PA, same spike. South Dakota, the same spike. Now, taking into consideration, some of these states do have fracking wells, such as the state of Pennsylvania, very, very big into fracking here. However, are you going to have the same spike across the entire United States at the same time? Sorry, I don't think so. So something is definitely occurring. Something is definitely affecting the earth in this frequency, and it is setting off these devices. Now, these devices are very, very sensitive. However, every single one of them across the globe is not going to register the same spike at the same time all across the United States, state by state. Then, something that was very, very alarming, and we're going to be getting down to it as we look through the rest of the United States, Alabama, same spike, just about at the same time. Virginia, they had a lot of activity going on at this time. Wisconsin, North Carolina, Utah, Montana, more in Alaska, South Dakota, Nevada, more of Montana, Minnesota, Erie, Pennsylvania. Hey, since when do they have earthquakes? And seismic activity in Erie, Pennsylvania. But you can see it, and it coincides with all of the other spikes across the globe. Michigan, Illinois, state of Washington, Utah, Texas, Colorado, all about the same time. Now, I'm going to show you something that was very alarming and this definitely opened up my eyes this is the data from the station lkwi lake yellowstone yellowstone national park wyoming same date same time 502 a.m and bingo there you go just about at midnight this super large spike and then it just reverberated straight out and that's Yellowstone, folks. And that is a very, very, very large spike 
on this seismogram. It's very alarming. I mean, we all know if we have a disaster that has anything to do with Yellowstone and that massive caldera, we are in a lot of trouble. And this just continues on and on and on. West Virginia, Arkansas, Montana, more of Texas, Colorado, South Carolina, Nebraska, the state of Washington, the state of Maine, Mississippi. So something occurred that definitely affected the earth at this time period, and all of the seismograms are showing that. What exactly occurred? Well, that's something that the USGS would have to answer, a seismologist. But it's very peculiar how this just rumbled straight across the United States. Now, I don't have the seismograms for the rest of the world. I'm going to be looking at those later on and for the same time. Now, these update themselves every 30 minutes. I'll leave you a link to this, and you can go ahead and check it out yourself. But then you ask, okay, well, why are you talking so much about these earthquakes? And once again, as I have mentioned so many times in the past, July, August, September, October, leading into November, the whole month of December, and now we're almost halfway through January. And just what I told everyone, and I've been telling everyone, the presence of a brown dwarf star within our solar system will definitely create problems with our sun, and it will definitely start to create problems with our planet. Now, something that I stumbled onto that I want to share with all of you, and I was just reading some information, and it was based on some paper that was written by NASA scientists about brown dwarf stars. And this goes all the way back to 2011, 2012, and 2013. And there was this big rush to find out all of this information pertaining to brown dwarf stars. And since then, they have found almost 2,000 brown dwarf stars. They're categorizing them. They're naming them, labeling them. They know where they're at. And then I run across this diagram. And this artist's rendition of a dark star, as they called it. So, within their paper and this artist's rendition, why would they put this in their paper and locate that dark star or that brown dwarf star slightly outside of our solar system, out past Pluto? And if anybody knows anything about the history and theories of the Nemesis solar system, this system came into our, our solar system and it came past Pluto and it perturbed Pluto and Neptune, Uranus and Saturn and Jupiter and so on. And this has all been documented. 1993, NASA launched and placed the IRAS space telescope, infrared, out into deep space. How did they know to point that craft in the direction of Nemesis, the brown dwarf star, and its small solar system. How did they know that? That's like trying to find a needle in a haystack, but yet they found it and they imaged it. And then all hell broke loose in NASA because they didn't know what to do. There were some quotes by scientists and astronomers that said, oh, that's not going to be here for the next 35 years, maybe longer. I'm not worried about it. I'll be dead and gone. Well, guess what, buddy? You know, you may be pushing up daisies and you may be dead and gone. But we, the people here now, we're here. We're experiencing this. And just because people say, oh, well, I'm looking through my telescope and I can't see it. Astronomers around the world. They can't see it. Okay, 
Well, this is how it was explained to me by a professional astronomer that from time to time will answer questions for me, but doesn't want to get deeply involved in the subject. And his explanation was very simple. He's like, Scott, take a drinking straw, point it to the sky and look through it. What do you see? Just a little tiny minute part of space. So what makes you think that an astronomer, even with the biggest and baddest telescope in the world, do you think that they're just going to point their telescope into space and capture panoramic views of space, the galaxy, the universe, and they're going to locate this dark star or this brown dwarf? Is it possible? Yes, it is possible if you know exactly where to look. So as far as everyone around the world taking their binoculars and their cell phones and their telescopes and just pointing them into space and expecting to see this, well, folks, it's not going to happen. It's the needle in the haystack. And the haystack is very large. So don't be fooled when you don't hear anything coming out of NASA and the space agencies about finding this brown dwarf because they know exactly where it is. Is it close enough to start affecting the sun? It has been. There have been problems stacking up with the sun for the past several years. Is this information publicized? No, it is not. Are there investigators and researchers out there outside of NASA that are trying to find the answers? Yes. You're listening to one of them people right now. I'm trying to find the answers. I don't have super space technology and neither does anybody else on the earth except for the space agencies, massive observatories and NASA and the world governments. So please, someone step up to the plate and tell me what in the hell is happening to our sun? Why are all of the planets in the solar system that we live in, why are they all heating up? There has to be scientific answers for all of this. You can dip back all the way into biblical times and read the scriptures about how the earth was shaking, balls of fire, the floods of Noah. You can go back further than that and go back to the ancient Chinese writings that depict all of this. All of it. Almost every single culture in mankind has written about this, has depicted all of it. Yes, they were they were primitive, but some of these some of these cultures were sophisticated. And they did note all of this down. Just because we are living in modern times right now, this doesn't mean that you can just look up into the sky and take these amazing photographs of rogue planets and a brown dwarf, especially when it's being hidden from you. And the luminosity of brown dwarfs is, is basically almost nothing, unless they are close enough to the sun where they will be illuminated. Now, is that accounting for all of the photographs, the tens of thousands of photographs that have come in showing some type of object, some type of large spherical object near and around the sun at the six o'clock position, at the three o'clock, the 12 o'clock, the nine o'clock, has it made its way around the earth in its final orbit to leave our solar system? Is this brown dwarf just on the outer fringe of our solar system or has it already made its way into our solar system, bringing its orbiting planets and moons into our solar system? Possibly right now between Jupiter and Saturn at approximately 780 million miles away from the sun. Would that vast distance create issues with our sun? 
Yes, it would. Brown dwarf stars are very, very powerful and very erratic. And so many people have said, oh, if there was another type of star in our solar system, we would know it. Well, guess what? You better start opening up your eyes because the effects on our planet have already started to occur. The effects on all of the other planets in our solar system have already occurred. And the effects on our beautiful sun has already started to occur. It's been happening, people. You just don't know it because people don't pay that close attention to it. And especially when things are being hidden from you and you don't have 100% disclosure. Don't be, I hate to use the word, but don't be stupid. Don't be so naive to think that everything is just peachy. Everything is just okay because it is not. Governments around the world are scrambling for answers. The United States, executive orders signed by the president in the middle of the night, only disclosed on the White House website. So if you didn't go to the website and you didn't look it up, guess what? You never knew that that executive order was signed. And what about the Space Weather Administrative Office that was signed into, you know, signed into by an executive order? Where is this space office and what the hell are they doing? It seems to me that they're not doing anything. The earthquakes are going to continue. Volcanic activity right now on this planet is increasing. But how would you know that? You have to look. There are plenty of credible websites out there where you could look this information up for yourself that are not attached to governments. It is really, really time to start taking a closer look at what is happening in our solar system. And it is very unfortunate that we don't have the power to just look up into the sky and discern what is happening. We are relying on each other and we are relying on other individuals to tell us and to give us theories. But if you want to sit there and be dumbed down by governments, by bad information, by people telling you, hey, listen, this is just all natural. Like I've said before, think about it. Think about the entire lifetime that you've had on this planet so far. And think back, when have you ever lived through something like that is occurring right now? To me, these are all eye-opening experiences. Each and every tick on the clock, to me, is a new experience and I'm finding things out each and every day. Why? Because I have the time to do this. I know a lot of you have families and jobs and careers. I'm retired. I can spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week doing this and researching and finding this information. So sometimes when people give you these just these really dumb answers. Oh, if there was something in our solar system, we would know it. No, you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know anything. Bottom line is, the earth is shaking and it is quaking. And the first time that one of these major volcanoes lets loose, it's going to be felt all around the world. One major catastrophe is going to lead to another, and then another, and the domino effect will start to occur. When is this gonna happen? Hey, listen, my crystal ball, it's not working. I wish it was. I wish I had dates, I wish I had coordinates, I wish I had 100% information for everybody around the world. 
Why aren't they telling us anything? Well, that's pretty obvious. You would have mass panic around the world and governments would lose control over their people. Is this a big conspiracy, a big plot for depopulization of the world? I don't know. There's evidence of it. Are you going to be on their list? I hope not. But anyways, folks, the information that I've given you today, the talk that we've had, please let it sink in. The things that are occurring around the world right now are not natural. They're just not. The presence of a brown dwarf star in our solar system is a very, very high possibility. And just because your local amateur astronomers and astronomy clubs don't see it and can't find it, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Remember, take a drinking straw, go outside at nighttime, look through the straw into the heavens, and tell me what you see. You're not going to see very much. And the same applies when you're using a telescope. No matter how big the telescope is, you're only going to see that section of space that the telescope lets you see. And we live in a vast solar system, galaxy, and universe. You can't even fathom the size. So anyways, for those of you that live in these earthquake regions of our globe, please, by all means, make sure that you have some type of plan, some type of an emergency plan. If any of you are taking medications that your life depends on, listen, go to your doctor. Tell your doctor that you're going on a trip. You're going to be gone for several months. Can I please, you know, get a three-month supply uh, of my medication? If you have a family, husband, wife, children, sit everybody down. Get a little plan together. Pack some things up. First aid kits, bottled water, whatever you think you need to prepare. Get an emergency evacuation plan from your house, your business. Think. You just don't want to run wild. Because as time goes on through the month of January and leading into February and leading into this spring, mark my words as we, we, we are here together on this video, mark my words, when we get into springtime, things are going to be a lot different. We may not even have telecommunications and the internet and cell phones. So therefore, getting information to people around the world isn't going to exist. Just be prepared. Just be prepared. There's so much going on, folks. So much going on. I mean, looking at these, these seismograms and looking at the earthquakes that are just scattering the globe on a daily basis, it's very scary. And I do realize that this information is upsetting. There's nothing uplifting about it. But you're not seeing your local news stations or national media, mainstream media, you don't see them caring about your safety. You don't see them caring about what is happening. Now, if there's a devastating earthquake and buildings fall and people die, well, they'll be right on it. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm just trying to bring you this information on a daily basis to open up your eyes, to make you understand that what is happening to our planet is not natural. And if you look for yourself and you dig a little deeper, you'll see for yourself what is happening. Is our Earth heating up internally? 
scientists say that it is. What's causing it? What would cause a planet to increase its internal temperature? I'd like for someone to answer that. I'm not a scientist, but what is causing the internal temperature of the Earth to increase? What caused all of the planets in our solar system to increase in temperature? What perturbed the orbits of the planets in our solar system? Was it just a hiccup? What happened? Some scientists that stay, you know, kind of off to the side, they don't want their names published, they won't go on the record and say, well, everything that's happening, yeah, that would kind of go along with, you know, like maybe, you know, a brown dwarf star on the outer fringes of our solar system, or, you know, maybe possibly making its way into our solar system. Yeah, that might be what's um, disturbing the sun. Are they going to come out in a press conference and say that? <laughs> Absolutely not. They wouldn't make it to the podium. You see what happened to Robert Harrington, who discovered Nemesis, the brown dwarf, right before he was ready to release his papers, 1993, boom, they killed him. Esophical cancer in a man that was perfectly healthy and who routinely got physicals because he worked for the United States Navy as a chief astronomer. Huh. All of a sudden, he drops dead of esophageal cancer, showing no symptoms and no signs of anything. And then all of his papers are now sealed, top secret and confidential by the United States government. Huh. Well, alrighty then. There you go. More secrets, more conspiracy, more cover up. Anyways, folks, with that said, we will be back within the next few hours and we're going to be showing some photographs from our subscribers. And some of these photographs are quite eye-opening. So please, stay tuned to the Nibiru channel. We will be back shortly. Thank you for watching. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is January 9th, 2017. And just issued on spaceweather.com a geomagnetic storm heading towards Earth today at 1.5 million miles per hour. Now, we've been dealing with these earthquakes and solar wind and radiation for the last several weeks now. The coronal holes on the sun have been impacting and creating these earthquakes on Earth. And I'm just going to go ahead and get right into the statement issued by spaceweather.com. And it states, solar wind surrounds the Earth for the fifth time in a row, Earth is surrounded by a fast-moving stream of solar wind flowing from a large coronal hole in the sun's atmosphere. NOAA forecasters say that there is a 25% of a G1-class geomagnetic storm. So you say to yourself, well, what does this all have to do with me, you, yourself, in general? Well, over the past two weeks, this is all that we've been dealing with are the coronal holes on the sun, what is affecting the sun, and all of these earthquakes all over the world. So getting right into the live map for earthquakes right now in live time, and if you just take a quick look at what is going on right now, just about on every continent on this planet, we have earthquakes and like I have been saying since going back to July I kept telling everyone as we get closer to winter time in the months of December January and February we are going to have increased earthquake activity and then followed up by increased volcanic activity no I'm not turning my Nibiru and Planet X channel into an earthquake channel 
But if you've been following me for quite some time, and you remember, I told everyone in all of my videos, these will be the first telltale signs that something is going seriously wrong, and it's going to begin with this increased earthquake activity. And it's happening. Each and every day around the globe, the earthquake activity is increasing in frequency and magnitude. Now, right now, the state of California, I'm just going to go ahead and move right over here to California. We'll zoom in just a little bit. Now, these earthquakes are only updated for, a for the last 24-hour period. So, as I had mentioned yesterday, the streaming line of earthquakes up and down the San Andreas Fault are very alarming. Now the state of California is undergoing this torrential downpour of rain. They also have snow melt that will be coming down from the Sierra Nevada mountains. Mudslides, earthquakes, flooding, the potential for a complete disaster. If you just look around the globe over the past 24 hours, two hours ago, magnitude 4.9 in Greece, Tajikistan, magnitude Five. The Philippines, two hours ago, magnitude 4.8. Indonesia, 4.7. This earthquake, 41 minutes ago, just came in, again from Indonesia, magnitude 5.5. And then the, the earthquakes and the aftershocks are just stacking up on top of each other. Magnitude 5.3, 5.3, 5.2. And something that kind of caught my attention was the very large earthquake in the northernmost tier of Canada in this group of islands up here. Now, the first earthquake was listed as a magnitude 6.4, Queen Elizabeth Islands, Canada. I mean, if you just take a look at a, at a map of North America and Canada, sometimes you don't even see these islands up there. But did they have just one earthquake? Uh, no, they're stacked on top of each other. And the further you zoom in, you start to see that not only did they have one at a magnitude 6.4, but then a 5.8 and another 5.8. Moving over to the South Pacific, Ring of Fire, again, 